What is going on everyone? This is Eric coming at you from just outside of Hartford, Connecticut. And today we are going to look at the Jeff Carter trade, which occurred back on June 23rd, 2011. Now this trade was between the Columbus Blue Jackets and Philadelphia Flyers and saw Columbus acquire Jeff Carter from the Flyers in exchange for a trio of assets. Now this trade happened as the Flyers had had a couple of somewhat successful years a couple of years before that. You know, they had a cup run, they had a couple playoff appearances, but after getting swept out of the 2011 playoffs, they, you know, management decided that it was time to look towards the future, get some new players, get some new young players. So they decided to trade away Jeff Carter. Columbus, on the flip side, felt that they were a couple players away from a cup run, so it seemed like the perfect trade. How did it work out? We will start with Columbus, who got center Jeff Carter. So Carter started, you know, he served as a rotating alternate captain. He wasn't the alternate captain every game, but he did wear the A periodically. And he would end up scoring 15 goals with 10 assists across 39 games in the 2011-2012 season. However, Columbus really started to struggle, and they traded him midway through the season. They traded him to the LA Kings in exchange for a draft pick and defenseman Jack Johnson. Now, Jack Johnson, he stepped in as a leader in Columbus immediately. He spent six and a half years on the team, serving as a do-it-all player where he played both offense and defense. So he would score 36 goals with 118 assists across 445 career games for the team over those six and a half seasons. He added 764 blocks as well as 731 hits in that time frame as well, which is very impressive. Now he also averaged over 23 minutes on ice per game, which once more is nice, especially nowadays for a defenseman. And then he ended up walking as a free agent after the 2017-18 season. Still pretty good ass, uh, you know, addition. They also got a 2013 first round pick, which would become the 27th overall pick, which they would use on right wing Marco Dano. Now Dano, he spent one year in the system playing mostly at the NHL level, where he produced eight goals and 13 assists over 35 games before he was traded. Now he gets traded in a big trade with the Chicago Blackhawks. And essentially what Columbus does is they get three assets for four, for five, sorry. Now, one player that they got was left wing Brandon Saad. And Brandon Saad, he was, he was a restricted free agent when this trade happened. So basically Columbus had to sign him to a deal right after, and they did. So he signed that, a big six year deal, and he responded well with a career year in the 2015-16 season where he would score 31 goals and 22 assists. The following year, he had 24 goals and 29 assists. Now, he ends up getting traded back to Chicago after that year, but he did make one all-star game for the team. So he gets traded back to Chicago along with two other assets for three assets. The first one we're going to look at is left-wing Artemi, Artemi Panarin. Now, Panarin, he had a strong year in the 2017-18 season where he scored 27 goals with 55 assists. Now, he would set a Blue Jackets franchise record for points in the 2018-19 season where he scored 28 goals and 59 assists for 87 points. Now, he would surprisingly walk after that season as Columbus seemed to be entering a little bit of a rebuild, but he was a good addition for the two years that he was on the team. We also have center Tyler Mott, and Mott, he would score three goals with two assists in a very minor role in a half season before he gets traded. Now, he's traded along with another asset to the Vancouver Canucks in exchange for left wing Thomas Vanek. And Vanek, he would have seven goals with eight assists in 19 games before he would walk as a free agent. Now, lastly, in the uh, Columbus trading away side trade, we have a 2017 six round pick, which would become the 170th pick. They would use this to select right wing Jonathan Davidson. Now, Davidson, he did not play for the team as he ends up getting traded. We will be discussing this in a future Map to Shane video. So definitely check that out. It will be linked in the description below once it is posted. So now we want to go back to this trade where the Columbus Blue Jackets originally got Brandon Saad because we have two more players to look at. We have center Alex Broadhurst. Now Broadhurst, he would spend four years in the system, mostly at the AHL level, as he would only appear in a pair of games at the NHL level before he would walk as free agent. Lastly, we have defenseman Michael Pagliata. And uh, Pagliata, he spent a single year in the system, mostly at the AHL level once more, where he only would make one game, play one game at the NHL level before he would also walk. So that covers Columbus. Philadelphia, in the original Carter trade, got three assets. The first one is right wing Jakub Voracek. You could say Jacob as well, but 
So Voracek, he's been a leader for the Flyers since he joined that team that year. He would score 18 goals and add 31 assists in the 11-12 season. The next year, he would add 22 goals with 24 assists. Now, this was after he moved up to the top line, so he would become a bit of a starter there. Now, in the 13-14 season, he had 23 goals to go with 39 assists. Now, he had a solid follow-up year where he would score 22 goals with 59 assists, which was a nice career, uh, almost career number for him. Uh, the following season, 15-16, he would score 11 goals with 44 assists, followed by 20 goals and 41 assists in the 16-17 season. Now, the 17-18 season was a, frank, was a uh, career year for him as he would score 20 goals, adding a career-high 65 assists. Now, this was also set his career high for 85 points, with 85 points. Now, his 18-19 season saw him score 20 goals with 46 assists. And he slowed down a little bit in the 19-20 season, as he would score 12 goals with 44 assists. Now, he regressed a little bit more in the 2021 season, as he would score 9 goals and add 34 assists. But he is still a veteran leader on the team to this day. He is a one-time All-Star for the Flyers. Now, they also got two draft picks. The first one we'll discuss is a 2011 first round pick, which became the eighth overall pick. This pick was used to select center Sean Couturier. And Couturier, in six years from the 2011-12 uh, season to the 16-17 season, Coots would score 70 goals and 121 assists, but he showed a strong defensive skill set. Now, by the 17-18 season, he started to show his offensive game. Now, in that 17-18 season, he would score 31 goals and add 45 assists, so he basically got half of his goal total that he had achieved the previous uh, you know, six years in a single year. So he definitely broke out. And in the 18-19 season, he had more goals as he scored 33 while adding 43 assists. In the 19-20 season, he scored 22 goals and added 37 assists. This year, also saw him win the Selkie Award for the first time. And then in the 2021 season, he scored 18 goals, adding 23 assists. Now, he, once more, like Voracek, is a leader for the team. He's a big defensive presence, and he's a one-time Selkie Award winner. Lastly, we have a 2011 third-round pick, which was a 68th overall pick. This was used by the Flyers to select center Nick Cousins, who would score 12 goals with 15 assists over 107 games for the Flyers before he was traded away to Arizona, along with another asset in exchange for two assets. The first one was left-wing Brendan Warren, and Warren, he did not sign with the team. He was a either a free agent or, you know, it was one of those things where he was on an expiring contract and the Flyers just elected not to sign him. They also got a 2018 fifth round pick, which became the 127th pick. This was used to select defenseman Wyatt Riley. And uh, Wiley had just joined the AHL for the 2021 season. So time will tell what happens with him. So that covers the first two teams. How did the rest of the teams do? We'll start with the Kings, of course, because they got Jeff Carter. So the Kings would make this trade as they're really contending for a cup. And this reunited him with Mike Richards. So it was nice to see the two former Flyers stars get reunited less than a year after being traded from the Flyers. Now he would score six goals with three assists in 16 games, but he broke out in the playoffs as he would pot eight goals as the Kings would win their first ever Stanley Cup. He scored 26 goals with seven assists in the lockout short in 2012-13 season. And then he scored 27 goals with 23 assists in the 13-14 season. Now, that year, the Kings once more won, a, uh, won the Stanley Cup, and he showed up once more as he scored 10 goals with 15 assists in those playoffs. Now, in the 14-15 season, he scored 28 goals with 34 assists, followed by 24 goals and 38 assists in the 15-16 season. He had another very strong year in the 2016-17 season as he would score 32 goals and 34 assists. Now, this would mark his high in goals for the LA team. Now, he suffered a cut early to his leg early in the 17-18 season, which forced him to miss most of the season as it got infected, but he still recorded 13 goals and 9 assists in 27 games that year. He had 13 goals in the 18-19 season, followed by 17 in the shortened 19-20 season. Now, in the 2021 season, he had 8 goals and 11 assists before he was traded away to the Pittsburgh Penguins. We will not be discussing that trade today, but yeah, good, good addition for the Kings. Next, we have Chicago, and Chicago made a couple of trades here. So we'll start with the first one here. They got right wing Marco Donu, and Donu struggled for Chicago, scoring a single goal and a single assist over 13 games before he ends up going and spending most of the rest of the year in the AHL. He gets traded away. We will not be discussing that today. Next, we have center Artem, 
Anisimov. And uh, Anisimov, he was a key player for four years in Chicago, scoring 77 goals and adding 78 assists across 291 games before he was traded. Once more, we will not be discussing that trade. Then we have left wing Jeremy Morin. And Morin, he spent half the year in the AHL before he was traded away. Again, we are not discussing that. Then we have right wing Corey Trope. And Corey Trope was loaned to another AHL club as he was not necessarily needed in Chicago's AHL affiliation. And then he eventually gets traded once more. We are not going to discuss that trade. Lastly, in this original trade, they got a 2016 fourth round pick, which became the 95th overall selection. This would get traded. And just like all the other assets that we had in this original trade here, Chicago's trade will not be discussed. Now we have Chicago once more with three more players. Now they reacquired left wing Brandon Saad. And Brandon Saad was a solid player for three years, scoring 62 goals and adding 53 assists over 220 games. But he was not worth a contract to a team that was seemingly rebuilding like the Chicago Blackhawks. So they traded him before the 2021 season. Once more, we will not be discussing that trade. I sound like a broken record. Then we have goaltender Antoine For Anton Forsberg, who was a part-time starter in the 17-18 season, but he did not wow the team enough, and he was moved to the AHL for the next season before he was traded. You know what I'm going to say. Lastly, we have a 2018 fifth-round pick, which became the 142nd pick in that draft. This pick will get traded, just like every other asset Chicago got. We will not be discussing it. So now we have two more teams. We'll go with the Vancouver Canucks first. So they got two assets here. The first is center Tyler Mott. And he's been a serviceable fourth-line player for three and a half years for the team. He has 21 goals and 14 assists. Lastly, for Vancouver, we have center UC Jokinen. And Jokinen had four goals with six assists in 14 games before he left the team. Lastly, we have the Arizona Coyotes, who got two players here. And they got center Nick Cousins, who spent two years in Arizona, scoring 19 goals and 27 assists as a bottom six forward before he walked as a free agent. Lastly, we have goaltender Merrick Madsen. And Madsen spent a couple of years in the system before leaving. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was the Jeff Carter trade. And yeah, it was a good trade for two teams. Philadelphia, Los Angeles. Columbus lost this trade not once, but twice. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Have a good rest of your day.